Okay, so um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Um, my name is Kara. I am going to be one of the hostesses throughout this series. Um, I am from Dallas, Texas, uh, but I'm joining you today from Louisiana, so welcome everybody. Um, I see a lot of familiar names on today's call, so thank you again for joining the series. And um, for everyone who's joining us for the first time, or maybe this is your first webinar, welcome, and we hope to see your name in a lot of the upcoming webinars. And speaking of upcoming, I will be going over a few more of the sessions that are available for you to register for this series here in just a second. So again, welcome to the first um, session of what we are calling the Programmability with Cisco DevNet webinar series. As we are going along today, um, as Wadi and Kirsten are presenting, if you have any questions, please go ahead and start submitting those into the Q&A panel as soon as um, possible. We will have about 10 to 15 minutes uh, at the end of today's session to go over some questions, um, but the sooner y'all start submitting those questions, the more questions, uh, or I'm sorry, the more time we will have to answer more questions at the end. If you lose um, audio or video during today's session, please chat with me privately via the chat window and I will do my best to help you get up and going and back uh, up and running as quickly as possible. Um, going back to the questions, since I just pointed out the chat panel, if you could please submit your questions to the Q&A panel, that way all the panelists can see your questions, um, that would be wonderful. We are recording, so a link to the recording will be sent out to all registrants. We will also be posting it on the Programmability with Cisco DevNet blog, and it will also be shared on social media. At the end of today's session, if you, you actually have to ex, exit out of the WebEx environment for it to pop up, um, but if you could please just take one or two minutes to fill out that survey, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. And as always, if you've joined these webinars before, you know that I, I beg y'all for your feedback on what topics y'all are interested in um, for future sessions. So please let us know how we do today, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. So just a quick overview, um, today's session, again, is session one, networking with programmability is easy. On October 31st, we are going to host a session, role of a network engineer in the programmable age. If you joined the DevNet series last year, um, you are probably familiar with Hank Preston and his presentations. He is going to be driving that session as well. And then on November 13th, we have software defined networking and controllers. So please um, go ahead and once Kirsten and Wadi get started today, I will share the, this link at the bottom of the screen in the chat window. Please go in, grab that link, and go and look at all the different topics that we're offering over the year. If any of these look familiar, only two of them should, um, please just know that this is refreshed, updated content, so everything's new. Um, as you all know, technology is always changing, and, and we are definitely here with a ton of new topics and um, refreshed topics from last year as well. So. Oh, it's not. Okay. Did it change on y'all's end? It took a second on my end for the slide to... Kirsten, why do you can one of you nod and just let me know that the slide advanced on y'all's end? Okay, perfect. So again, everyone, um, thank you for joining us. And I just want to take a few seconds to introduce you to our presenters today. Um, Kirsten has been uh, bringing software development to students for the last several years and is really pleased to help students and network professionals find a passion for software at Cisco. And she is joining us from Cisco DevNet. We also have um, Wadi who's joining us from the Netacad, Netacad side of things. He is the DevNet Global Partnership Lead in our Corporate Affairs Department. So welcome to you both, and thank you both for spending all of your time on this great uh, presentation that you have today. And Wadi, I am passing the ball over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this nice introduction. Uh, is the audio uh, okay from my side? You can, uh, you can hear yep. me uh, clearly. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, great. Fantastic. So I'll keep my, uh, my video on then. But folks, it is amazing to be uh, with you today. I'm looking at the number of attendees and I'm looking at all the messages that we see here from all around the, the globe. This is really fantastic. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be with us today. I am personally traveling, so my home is Montreal, but I'm in Marrakesh uh, this week for a partner summit for the Europe, Middle East, Africa. Uh, region and it has been fantastic energy. Wish that uh, some of you guys could be uh, with us for this for this event. So uh, for those who are based out of Europe, Middle East, Africa, some of your peers are here. It's, it's been a great uh, couple of days and we're looking forward to some more action. 
Um, today, we're diving into this special introductory session about this fantastic partnership that we have with the DevNet group. Uh, my colleague, friend, and partner in crime, Kirsten, who's also on a call, is going to be um, working with me and co-presenting uh, this, uh, this session um, uh, for you guys. Uh, as, I, as, uh, as Kara mentioned, any questions, please uh, put them in the chat and we will uh, try to answer all the questions. You can, of course, contact us after the session. You've got our contact information. Um, starting with uh, the agenda with uh, our first topic here, the webinar series. So essentially what we're trying to do, shamelessly, we want to convince you guys to get on board the DevNet uh, uh, truck at Cisco Networking Academy. So what we want to do, we want to convince you that this is something really fantastic. It's an extremely important opportunity for you to, um, to dive into, for, for the students who are here, for the teachers who are here, because this is going to be the future. So in the coming slides, we're going to talk about uh, DevNet, the fantastic stuff that we are doing with the DevNet team. And at the end, if, not, if everyone is not energized to, to do this, then definitely there's, there's something uh, that we have to do about it. Uh, Kara told, uh, told already about or talked about uh, the sessions that we will be um, we will be going through and in every every month. Um, I, I believe she did not mention that we're going to be having a raffle uh, at the end of the series. So for everyone on the call, you're already here, so you have a head start with respect to everyone else. We're going to be drawing uh, a bunch of gift cards uh, from Amazon. This way, you can use them globally for a bunch of you uh, who are participating. So if you manage to attend all the sessions, then you have 10 chances to uh, get a, um, a card. And if you, uh, if you have managed to attend uh, some of the sessions in person and some of them recorded, then you can uh, aim for uh, five cards. So it's our uh, simple way to thank you for uh, being with us for the coming um, uh, couple of months of, of these sessions. And at obviously certificates of participation uh, will be uh, sent out at the end of the series and Kara has been nice enough to provide us with the instructions uh, to be able to get those certificates of participation. So without further ado, let me dive into the agenda for today and talk about the big question, why, why we in Networking Academy want to partner with DevNet and most importantly, what does this bring you guys in Networking Academy, what is the advantage that you guys are going to get out of Networking Academy? This slide that I have here, and I'm assuming, uh, Kirsten, if you can nudge and see that it's working fine, so we're good. Perfect, thank you. So what I'm showing here on this slide is a bunch of companies or names that you may have had the opportunity to interact with. Um, I'm, some of you might know, might know the company called Sears. It's a, it's a, um, it's a chain of um, big um, uh, retail stores. It's very uh, famous across the United States and Canada. I'm not sure if we have it outside of the geography. Zellers, Target, Toys R Us, uh, a, a set of hotels, the Sheraton, the Hyatt, the Intercontinental. On the right side, you can see it's a movie theater, a, a cinema if you want. Uh, underneath that, we have uh, newspapers, just a standard, plain old newspaper that smells fantastic. A taxi, and a and that's the the one in the middle. That's that's really interesting. It's actually a mining truck, a truck that people use to mine, or, you know, gold or whatever, uh, uh, worldwide. And so all of these have one thing in common. It might not be very obvious, but all of these have been disrupted. So oh, sorry for the D that went down. So all of these have. Been disrupted the business that these uh, companies or <coughs> um, have, been, have been working is, is now in danger. So their whole business model is, is in danger. If you've been following a little bit the news, you probably said that Sears has filed for bankruptcy, Target has exited Canada, Toys R Us is in not a better shape. People are reading less and less newspapers, uh, showing less and less to the movie theaters. And obviously, taxis are having issues. And the reason that this is very simple. It's data, it's the internet, it's the connectivity. So because of this change that we see worldwide, 
with the appearance of companies, those smaller companies, started small anyway, <coughs> that relies on the data and on the security, they are now uh, transforming the whole space and they're basically shifting uh, and, and making all those old companies disappear. So everyone knows about Amazon, everyone knows about eBay, Alibaba I know is very famous. <coughs> and YouTube, Netflix is available worldwide, YouTube is available worldwide. With a click of a button you can literally uh, watch any movie you want, you can check any videos you want on any topic. Newspapers, you know, people are posting stuff on Instagram, or tweeting information, people are posting articles on Facebook. So you can see what's common here. All of these uh, names or brands that I'm just seeing here are slowly endangering the old species and literally replacing them uh, as, as we move along. Some uh, entities or some of those companies are able to survive because they are understanding what's happening while others are not able to compete and disappearing like the Sears and the, and the Toys of uh, Toys for Us. Uh, the two other icons One, that you see, um, yes? Um, I can still hear you, but um, every now and then it's, it's getting a little fuzzy. Okay. I don't know if it's the Bluetooth or, but like I said, we can still hear you. You haven't gone out, we haven't lost audio, but every once in a while it just sounds like um, some background noise. Okay. I'm going to try to turn my camera off, and please let me know if this is better. Yeah, it's, so, it's still doing it. In fact, when you just said that, it was it was pretty consistent. Okay. Uh, what about now? Are we okay with that? You said all that clear. We'll we'll see if okay. it, it keeps going. Sorry, I didn't want okay. to interrupt you. Let me know. Let me know if, if that goes. Yeah. It's, so, okay. Yeah, it's doing it again. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, it's probably the connectivity that uh, that we have. I'll try to speak uh, slower. Maybe that will that will work or not. Yep, you sound you sound good. Okay. And so I was also talking about Uber and Lyft. Those are replacing taxi companies, or at least endangering other taxi companies across the world. Airbnb, home away, where people can list their uh, apartments. So all of that is literally transforming the uh, across across the world. So, as I mentioned, some of the businesses are able to um, align with this disruption, with this change, while others are not. And I'm showing this uh, so a snapshot here that depicts uh, what's happening. So you can see the people on the right are too busy doing things the old way, whereas the gentleman on the left is trying to keep the wheels so that they can go faster. That's the uh, challenge and that's the danger that uh, some businesses are um, being confronted with because of the changes, because of the disruption. And what is disruption? Yes? No, it's it's still? still doing it. I'm sorry. Um, let me... Uh, Yes, so far, yes. Okay. Oh, so please accept my apologies uh, for this. So I was saying digital disruption and those companies disappearing, and we see this happening everywhere. You could see the prediction that we saw in 2015 and in 20, 2017, and things are not getting better. On the contrary, things are getting uh, more complicated, especially for the businesses that can be digitized, for the businesses that rely on digitization. So the story is simple. You either accept the disruption, embrace it, or you basically risk the uh, chance of losing your business. Cisco has accepted to transform. It has totally transformed for the past couple of years into a software company. So we're essentially now selling software. You probably heard the great news about what Cisco is doing worldwide, a business model that is changing. So undoubtedly, Cisco is moving into the right direction. And at the core of Cisco strategy, at the core of the Cisco vision, there is a one keyword, programmability. Every piece of equipment that Cisco is selling these days has programmability embedded in it. From our routers, from our switches, from our access points, Meraki and else, everything has at least of programmability whereby our gear can now be programmable. This is an important hint 
that we read in the markets that we see from a Cisco perspective about the need of getting everything uh, to become programmable. And so with this in mind, we in Networking Academy started looking outside of what we do at the core into a, a partner who would help us embrace this change, embrace this uh, programmability, and who better than one of our internal partner within uh, Cisco, Cisco basically DevNet. And this is where I'll pass the ball to my colleague and friend, uh, Kirsten, who's gonna be taking us into an introduction about what DevNet does, the use cases in DevNet, and hopefully this will also give you some more research as to why it is important for you guys to get on the programmability bus for, for the future of your students and uh, their careers. So Kirsten? Great, thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna do video, but if the audio starts to have problems, Kara told me you guys generally like to have video, so, so I'll give it a try. But uh, if there are audio problems, I'll go off. Um, yeah, so Wadi was just showing a slide about all the products within Cisco that are now programmable. And so you're probably wondering why DevNet is here. We are the Cisco's developer community and platform for innovation. And why DevNet was formed was four or five years ago, Cisco decided they were gonna build this programmability into the whole product portfolio. And so we're responsible for catalyzing innovation on programmable networks. Uh, Wadi, I think you're advancing slides for me, is that right? Or? Um, so, as you can see, this is Cisco knew this was going to happen. This is research from IDC saying that uh, through the year 2020, there's going to be 54% growth in programmable networks. So what does that mean for you? That means there's going to be a lot of jobs available for people who have these kinds of skills or people who can at least work with others, uh, you know, having a networking background and being able to work with those who have coding skills. Um, next slide. So if you're not familiar with a developer program, I just wanted to take a minute to explain it in something that's very tangible for you. Maybe you have an Android phone or you have an Apple MacBook but those products bring more meaning to you when you are able to watch videos or use the maps for navigation, uh, then it actually has value and meaning to you. And that all, all, much of those software and services are brought from the ecosystem, not necessarily always from the company themselves. Um, and so the whole industry is grappling now with what it means when Cisco has a developer program. And we have early adopters who jumped on board, but now we're really starting to see at Cisco Live events and uh, in different things that we're doing with DevNet that we're reaching critical mass. We're, reached, we're having a lot of people come to us uh, to learn more about this because Cisco's products across networking, IoT, collaboration, cloud security, and data center is now all programmable. And that means we can drive greater innovation in the industry. Next slide. And so this is where DevNet comes in. We started off working with developers as customers, and eventually we realized that we needed to take it a level further, and we started to work with industry partners. So our resellers, our, our software partners, um, instructors and students, to help create this vibrant ecosystem and catalyze and accelerate digitization. So we are the platform for innovation inside of Cisco because we represent the over 85 APIs that Cisco offers. Uh, I hope you were able to join the session last year where we talked about APIs, but these are basically connectors of software that enable you to, to access the software and integrate it into a system. So we have, uh, we cover IoT, cloud, networking, all of these technology areas you see here. And if you have interest in any of those areas, you can start to explore training and, and uh, the technologies around that to see 
if there is interest for you in pursuing that as a career. Next slide. And that's significant because this research that just came from IDC, it was a, re it was a survey done with executives in the industry in enterprise. And they were saying that the most significant roles are going to be those that are able to uh, handle functions at the intersection of digitization. So that means the network, data center, cloud, big data, IoT, and cybersecurity. And there's actually, they identified 20 roles that's going to represent 5 million jobs through the year 2027. And so if you can start to build up expertise, Netacad often talks about having the horizontal expertise or being able to work across domains. That's going to be a critical skill for you in, in the future. And that's part of what we're trying to do in working with Netacad and the offering that we have on DevNet. Next slide. So this is where it really all comes together. We have two personas that are starting to work together, and this is fairly new in the industry, but you have the infrastructure developers on the one side, which would be people like yourself, people who've come up and studied networking and have developed those skills. And then on the other side, we have application developers, and I'll spend a minute talking about why they care. Um, so with infrastructure developers, automation becomes really key, being able to do that through programmability. When you have a programmable network, we have one client in financial services that actually was able to take uh, configuration updates from 13 months to 16 minutes by working with APIs, uh, both Cisco and open APIs, as well as integrating one of our, our partners' technologies. So incredible uh, speed to market. Then you're going to be able to gain more observability and insights into the health of your network, um, be able to do security at the networking layer, and then start to develop this uh, DevOps practices, which comes from the software world. You know, you are always getting updates on your phone, and you get software updates on your, your MacBook or your PC. Or, so this is the, the way that the software industry has rapidly deployed innovation. This is starting to work its way into networking now. And uh, doing branches and commits enables you to innovate faster on the network. So you're going to hear this term called net DevOps uh, in the future as we start to embrace these processes. So utilizing the network APIs, application developers can do cloud and multi-cloud in the enterprise. They're able to do digitized infrastructure. So with IoT, there's so many new devices and software coming onto the network that it's really important to be able to leverage APIs to manage those. And then the next thing is application performance. If you are a software uh, company and you have, let's say, video in your application, you don't want your users to have the experience of trying to do video and they get a poor connection error. So by doing quality of service at the network layer, you're ensuring that the performance of your application, that people are going to be able to do video as it's prioritized on the network. And then as we talked about with IoT, all these devices, the, the network is just expanding and growing, which means that there's also a, a wider threat surface for people to attack. So doing security at the networking layer is going to go hand in hand with this programmable network and become really important in the industry. Next slide. So I encourage you to explore the resources that we have on DevNet. Um, and I'll just walk through these fairly quickly, but there are, are learning tracks, video courses, sandboxes, code exchange and ecosystem exchange. But Wadia is going to talk to you about what we've co-developed specifically for your classrooms, for your teachers to work with you. And, um, but this is, this is what we offer inside of the, the DevNet uh, community. Next slide. So again, this isn't going to be in your classroom. These are self-paced learning labs. So if you have the inclination to go learn some of this on your own, 
There's learning labs and video courses that you can leverage. Next slide, please. And then Cisco infrastructure, as you know, it's, you probably have, you know, maybe you have some in your labs at school, but it can be quite expensive when you start talking about a Catalyst 9000 um, or having, you know, the Catalyst 9000 and Meraki and all the different uh, equipment that Cisco offers. We actually have these remote labs that you can access 24-7, uh, every day, all day. <laughs> free and you can go in and be able to play with software in an environment that isn't going to mess up the lab in your classroom and really be able to kick the tires with APIs and, you know, start with your first hello world to being able to move to a proof of concept with these remote labs that we have available and developers really love this. Okay, next slide. And then we have something called Code Exchange, which is a repository uh, it's of uh, all of the code that is on GitHub that's been created by Cisco and the community. And Code Exchange enables you to know what software works with what system. So it's a great way to go and find out more. And if you are embarking on a project, you can look at the code that other people have written, maybe leverage some code snippets. So this is a great tool that we provide to the community. Next slide. And then we have Ecosystem Exchange. So think of this as the App Store uh, for Cisco, if you will. These are all the solutions that are available on, uh, on the Cisco platform. And so you're going to see a variety of companies like Big Belly, there's a Smart City Solution, it's an IoT connected um, garbage can um, that, uh, that you can actually make part of your Cisco solution. Um, there's a number of scenarios, but next slide. I was asked to go into a couple of use cases to help bring this to, uh, to life for you so you can understand what exactly you can do with these tools. And so this is the uh, first solution. Maybe you're familiar, there's a conference called Web Summit that's held in Portugal every year. It's actually coming up in a few weeks. And one of the things, they were having difficulty, uh, they had another location, had some difficulty with the networking, but also having difficulty helping people find their sessions that they wanted to go to. And so this is, the, there's this company called Mapwise. They're an independent software vendor or an application partner that Cisco works with and they provide indoor wayfinding software. So this is exactly what I was talking about in that slide of bringing together app developers and infrastructure developers. So Mapwise is working with the infrastructure of Meraki to enable people to basically be guided location to their location of the next uh, session. So that's one example. Next slide. And then we have Meraki, so at, at, with Alexa. Maybe you're familiar with Alexa. The Meraki Dev Kit uh, connects to the Amazon Alexa. And basically, you can, if you're the owner of a store, you may have Wi Fi available for the guests. So let's say you, you have a coffee store, and at 8 a.m. every day, you're turning on the Wi Fi to enable your guests to be able to connect. So without requiring provisioning of hardware, this solution, working with Alexa skills and the Lambda function, you can actually uh, turn on and off the, the Wi-Fi. You can manage the passwords and um, log in to, to manage the solution remotely. So that's a, a pretty cool thing that you can do with the Meraki REST APIs. Next slide. And then somehow we ended up with two, two solutions from Portugal. So I hope Portugal is represented on the phone here. Um, but uh, this is another solution, a smart city solution. The city of Braga was having a, a problem in that they were experiencing declining ridership on their public transportation. And the reason for this was that there really wasn't good data coming from the uh, the 
transportation company systems and being able to connect that with the end users. So Cisco and IBM were in the city of Braga doing an event and they, the IBM people found out about the Cisco APIs and realized that by combining Watson APIs and Cisco APIs that they could create, uh, that we could create a solution for the city of Braga and all of these fleet of buses you see here were digitized with Cisco routers. And then there was Wi-Fi on the bus, there was a mobile app created, there was better data coming at the bus stops, and ultimately the citizens of Braga were experiencing a better uh, experience by leveraging this solution um, and, and better data was enabled. Next slide. So I encourage you, we've built a community for uh, instructors and students on the DevNet site, and we've curated content for you to take a look at. So I encourage you to come over and, and take a look. You can actually use your NetAcad login, and we encourage you to do so because then we can help uh, guide you better through resources as you explore. And that's all I have on, on DevNet, but Wadia is going to talk to you about what we've co-developed specifically for you in your classrooms, some workshops that I really hope you'll take advantage of to get started on your journey with programmability. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kirsten. That was great. So, guys, um, stopping for a second, um, think about the um, – the, the couple examples that Kirsten was talking about and think about the possibilities. Isn't it cool if you're able to use your Amazon Alexa or a Google Google device, a Google Home to device to pretty much control your wireless uh, access point or control your networking devices? You can expand this literally to more and more examples. And this was just an example at a very small scale for a small commercial site or maybe if you guys have a fancy a Emiraki access point in a classroom or whatever. So this is a very simple, very tangible example of how you could really leverage network programmability and how you're able to communicate uh, via the network. And so I'm seeing the flow of questions in the comments and a bunch of folks have contacted me asking about courses that are available for students and instructors within Networking Academy. And I'd like to specifically talk about this uh, in the uh, in the coming couple of slides. So, <coughs> with the support of DevNet and our wonderful products team that uh, Joseph is representing on this call, we have co-authored uh, content. So, b content that was built by our team and the support of DevNet, and we do have uh, two workshops already available for students and instructors. It's available, so these workshops are available as of today. Now, we recommend you to start with those workshops because they are built and designed using the same philosophy that all our networking academy courses are, are using. So by going through the workshop, you follow the same approach that you followed with any of our courses, and it will make your a transition to the DevNet world easier and definitely uh, more exciting because the folks who have coded this have built a lot of little examples to take you one step at a time so that you, you can really enjoy uh, the process itself. So the two workshops that we have, as I mentioned, are already uh, released and they're available for, for you to use uh, immediately. Um, the first one is called networking or network programmability. The second one is REST API using Cisco WebEx. Our team is working on releasing some extra uh, stuff, so stay tuned for some more updates. But let's spend a few minutes to talk about those two workshops and what you could do with them. Let me start with the first one, the REST API using WebEx Teams. If you're familiar with WebEx Teams, you might have maybe used the software before. It was called Spark before it transformed into WebEx Teams. It is essentially our collaboration tool that we use at Cisco and that you may have used uh, as instructors or as students as you're collaborating uh, for classes. It's a, you can say it's an advanced chatting uh, uh, platform that you can use. You can use it to communicate with instructors or students, share photos, share um, files, assignments, and what have you. 
What's so nice about this, about this, uh, this workshop that I'm talking about now, it would allow you to work with the platform in a programmatic way. So think about the possibilities that one can do. You can code something, and then when a specific event happens, have the platform communicate with you and talk about it. For example, you can uh, let the platform tell you if there are any planes flying above your head now, or send an alarm at a specific time, or ping a couple hosts in your, in your lab and give you a message saying that, well, the hosts are available or the hosts are not available. You can even code uh, chatbots after you've gone through the course and spent some more time, you, uh, excuse me, you've gone through the workshop and spent some more time, then you can literally, as you progress, code some chatbots and then make it super interactive. This is a very nice uh, workshop. It is uh, short, so you can see the estimated time to complete is around eight hours. Some people take maybe a few more hours. Some people take less, depending on their uh, prior expertise. It requires basic programming knowledge, and we prefer Python. Some folks were asking the question about the language that we prefer. Python is the, the de facto language that is being used these days. If you like or fancy some other languages, as long as they have API capabilities, then you can do the coding, but obviously you'll have to transform the examples into that appropriate language. But in the case of Python, it's simple, straightforward, and uh, you can get uh, set up uh, directly. So. It requires some basic programming knowledge. It does take anywhere between six to eight hours or 10 hours. So we're not talking about a course, a very long course. We're talking about a workshop, very practical, application-centric, super, super uh, fun to, to go through that I'm sure everyone will love uh, taking. The most important piece I'd like to highlight here, this is an instructor-led exercise for now. So you cannot immediately enroll in this. Uh, you'll have to communicate with your instructor at the networking academy and have the instructor uh, activate the course or activate the workshop, excuse me again, and basically um, uh, take it with them. If you are an instructor uh, uh, attending this, this, uh, this webinar now, then you, are, you will see the, the requirements for you to be able to teach the workshop on the, uh, on the website, on the NetAcad website. So that was the REST API. The second one is the network programmability one, and this one cranks it up a notch. It's very, very cool. So what you will be doing here is you will be accessing a sandbox where basically uh, DevNet has a built a, a space, or so a sandbox, which is a confined space where we have networking equipment or specific devices that you can play with as, as we mentioned, for free. So uh, DevNet has built a sandbox, a bunch of sandboxes for us, where you can um, communicate with a, with a controller that would allow you to get information about the network. So you probably know how to get information from, from devices using uh, the shell when you, when you log into the device or maybe by doing uh, the, the web access to their platform. This is the third way uh, that you can use to communicate with the devices. And obviously, when you, when you think programmability, it means that you can script uh, your instructions and then run them in one shot. So that makes things obviously much more automated, easier, less prone to mistakes. So this course or this workshop will take you exactly through this process. You will be uh, connecting with uh, um, controllers and basically getting network information from them directly. Getting this kind of a sandbox at uh, your college, at the university, at your academic institution is pretty expensive, but hey, we have it available for you online uh, in the cloud, totally free. And we have a bunch of those dedicated for you guys, for the Networking Academy instructors and Networking Academy students, because we know that you wanna spend some time in exploring the environment. This one is very similar to the, to the previous one from a prerequisite perspective. It is also instructor-led. It is intermediate in level, but I'm confident that people, especially people who are taking the networking tracks within the networking academy are gonna love this one, literally. And from a requirement perspective, this is where the differentiation is. You will need the Python basic programming skills, but you also need to be at a CCNA2 level. So if you've completed the CCNA1 and now you're doing your CCNA2, that would be the best time for you to take the workshop. It is uh, essential that you have those basic requirements so that you can really enjoy uh, going through the, uh, through the workshop itself. 
So those two workshops, <coughs> excuse me, are already available. As I mentioned, the two links, um, we're going to be posting them in the, uh, in the chat window and you can get them from the recording or you can just go to the NetAcad website and browse to the, in the course section, you will also find the links there. As I mentioned, if you're an instructor, please go to the course resources. You will see the information about those courses and how you can get yourself qualified to teach those. If you're a student, tomorrow when you go to class, check your instructors and tell them to start activating those and giving you access to those because this is going to be extremely important in the future for your career. So we're, we're, we're putting a lot of effort to make sure that you have access to this as early as possible. As uh, Kirsten mentioned, we strongly advise you guys to start with those workshops. They're going to give you the first steps into the DevNet world. They will explain in great detail how the sandbox operates, what really is DevNet, what is the community of, uh, of practice, how you can access the resources. It will also include a nice introduction about Python. So it will prepare you to go into the DevNet world in a much organized way, in a way that you are familiar with within Cisco Networking Academy. Once you're done with this, you're done with a bunch of those workshops, or if you fancy even accessing it now to explore what DevNet has to offer, then head to your, your browser with this website, so with its URL, developerscisco.com forward slash site forward slash NetAcad. As Kirsten mentioned, please make sure to log in with your Cisco NetAcad login. It is very important for us to have um, uh, visibility as to our Networking Academy students and their access to the DevNet platform. So please make sure to log in with your NetAcad website. And this is, uh, this is the end for me from a, from a presentation perspective. We're going to continue looking at questions in the Q&A chat. If you guys have some more questions, please make sure uh, to post them. Um, we're happy to uh, reply and respond to all of the questions. As I mentioned, those are already available. Please take the first step to access the content. This is really critical for your career. Thank you, uh, Kirsten, for taking the time to, to go through the, the DevNet details and um, passing the ball uh, back to Kara. Thank you so much, uh, Wadi and Kirsten. Um, great presentation. Um, there are a lot of questions. Um, I know Joseph has been doing a wonderful job at answering them as they're coming along. Um, the first question that I have for you guys, Joseph did actually answer in um, the Q&A panel, but I thought it might be a good one to just um, address out loud. Um, but what is um, some of the first steps I would recommend um, for someone wanting to go into programming? Into network programming or into programming per se? Is the question um, about the programming piece? It just says into programming. Let me ask for clarification. Okay. So while, uh, while you try to get this information, um, we do have under Networking Academy Python curricula, we have a C curricula, and we have C++ curricula. You are all Networking Academy students and instructors. This content is available, available to you free of charge. If you want to take my two cents on this, I would say start with Python because it's a, a very uh, well used and documented programming language. It's now being used as a cornerstone for a lot of the development, including obviously uh, uh, working with APIs. But again, working with APIs is not only limited to Python. You can do it with C, you can do it with literally any programming language that uh, has uh, API access that can work with APIs. But again, the content that we have on the DevNet website is all Python driven or most of it anyway. And Python itself is a very, very simple language. So personal recommendation as a network engineer who has a fair amount of networking background and of programming background, go ahead and try it out with Python. The syntax is easy. It's uh, super cool to use it and you will benefit uh, the best out of it. Thank you. And um, the other question uh, has come up multiple times, and I know you all have already addressed it, so if we could just address it one more time um, out loud. Can anyone access the DevNet website, or do you have to be affiliated with NetAcad? So the, the, the answer to this question is yes, and Kirsten, uh, if you want to also add to the answer here. As a Networking Academy user, as we mentioned, as soon as you try to log in to the DevNet website, you will get a prompt asking you to authenticate yourself. 
you can use your networking academy login or you can use a bunch of other uh, logins pretty much a social media login or what have you again this is a networking academy call we're building a lot of the networking academy stuff for you guys everyone on this webinar is presumably a networking academy student or instructor so we're hoping that you will be able to use your netacad login because we want to continue working with you and building resources for you guys. But would anyone else from the outside come and then leverage the DevNet platform? Absolutely. Cisco DevNet is doing this for free for the community, so people are welcome to come and code and learn and explore and program. Thank you, Ruddy. Um, and also, there are some NetAcad instructors on the call that would like to, to know, when taking a DevNet workshop, what are the requirements? That's a, uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting question that we have here. Um, so, <coughs> as you can see, uh, we put a, a couple of requirements for the, uh, for, the, for the community so that they can, uh, they, can, uh, they can take the courses. So, students obviously cannot uh, self-train on this. Uh, instructors are the only uh, people who can activate those courses. So, the instructor himself or herself can uh, uh, get trained on the on the um, DevNet, uh, sorry, on the on the ETWs, on the Emerging Te Te Technology Workshop. Uh, they can they can do it in three ways. They can either self-enroll, so if they have the expertise or they have done some programming before and they have the CTN2 kind of a level, then they can uh, they can self-enroll and then take the workshop on their own. It would take them anywhere between four to eight hours, depending on their expertise. If not. They can connect with an ITC if they don't have the time or they don't have the expertise. They can connect with an, uh, with an ITC, an instructor training center, and that ITC will help them do it. And if they're also attending a conference where one of our technical teams is uh, presenting and is running a, an ETW, then they also can get certified uh, at this location. So there are a variety of ways, and the easiest one is allocate some time at home to activate the workshop and then basically go through it as an instructor. I promise you, it would take you literally an afternoon to go through the content, especially if you have a strong networking background and you have the basic programming knowledge. And I know a lot of our instructors have this background already. So I'm confident that an instructor will be, will be able to do it if they, if they want to really learn about it. So everyone, I see um, multiple questions on the slide deck. Uh, we will post a PDF version of the slides on the Dev, DevNet blog. I have put the link in the window. I will put it again just so it's at the bottom, easy to grab. And then there's been a lot of questions about the links that were shared in today's presentation. I have put all of those in the chat window as well. Um, if you're not able to locate them, please make sure that you're in the chat window and not the Q&A uh, panel. So again, all of the links that were shared today are available in the chat window. Let's see. Fantastic. There are so many questions, and I'm not sure that we're going to be able to answer all of those. So uh, please continue posting them. Uh, we're going to go, I'll personally go through all the questions, and we'll provide, maybe we can also provide a PDF with the answers, Kara, you think? Because it seems there's a lot of interest here. There, there are a lot of questions and answers. Um, were you asking if I can post the the uh, yeah? If we uh, if we uh, afterwards after finishing the call, I take some time and we go through the questions and we try to answer them in a in an organized way. Maybe we can post the Q and A so that uh, people who have asked the questions benefit from them because I believe there are way too many questions even to complete them before the end of the session. Oh yeah, there's always a ton of questions. I love it. <laughs> Inquiring mind. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Um, if, if you, Guys, this is really like fantastic. Yo, it's great. Yes, if you would like to do that, I can work with you on that for sure. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so continue posting your questions if you don't see the answer. I'm committing to taking all those questions later, uh, going through the questions, organizing, and then providing with the answer and posting those questions back. Uh, Kara will, will provide you with this. That's the minimum that we can do because we, we see really that there's, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interest. And I want to make sure that you get the bang for the bucks. And I, I want to take this a few seconds to say thank you for offering that. I have done over 100 webinars and you are the first person to offer that. So I know that's gonna take some time, so thank you. Um, I'm sure the students will appreciate that. Um, we did have a question um, during the presentation. Y'all mentioned the term REST API. Can you please explain what that means? 
Yeah. Uh, so I'll pass the ball to Kirsten, who, who has a, who has a little bit silent. If you want to go ahead, or if you prefer, we can also have Joseph, who's been <laughs> answering all the technical questions also on the call. Uh, KK, do you want to answer that one uh, with regards to what REST API is about? Uh, well, there is a, a course inside of Netacad that that uh, Joseph has, and Giuseppe have created specifically to help you with that. The REST API is basically a way for you to interface through the software. I don't know, uh, Joseph, if you want to add something there. Um, just a short input. The REST API is a form how you can write applications and make sure that your applications are able to talk with, for example, the network infrastructure. So you can imagine that you have a router or switch, and that interface that you are using to talk to the device is called the REST API. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, let's. Yeah, if you want a very simple approach uh, or a simple answer to this, it's a, a generic way or a or a or a or a way that it's an agreed upon uh, communication medium that uh, that we use to communicate with devices that accept uh, that protocol. Let's say uh, we're now all speaking English here, so we're using the same language as a protocol to communicate, which is basically English in here. REST API is again a protocol that we can use to communicate with devices, and then. The devices that support REST as a protocol will be able to communicate with it. So it's yet another way to communicate with devices. It is not only for networking devices. Uh, you can find even some other devices. You might have a, I don't know, a, um, um, <laughs> so I have a small uh, device that senses the soil uh, uh, and the, uh, the humidity uh, the humidity of the soil for my plants at home. This device is REST API capable, so I can communicate with a device. It's an IoT device. I can communicate with a device via REST and then get the information about the soil, about the humidity level, etc. So think of it as a, a protocol or a communication uh, medium or interface or, or maybe a mini language that we can use to get data and send data to devices that speak it. Awesome. Yeah, basically a way to connect two pieces of software or, or software with uh, hardware. So think of it almost like a plug, yeah. putting, enabling the capability to communicate back and forth. Yeah. So, um, Wadi, are there any courses or training um, by Netacad, um, either currently or in the future, that will teach about net DevOps? Uh, well, I can't speak of the future because um, this is <laughs> what we're talking about here, obviously, is something that is really a bleeding edge. So what's so great about this, and this is what gets us so excited at Medicaid for, for, for this particular instance, we have the, the ability to propose to you guys something that is extremely hot today. We're not working on something that was hot and then we're kind of trying to catch up with the train. This is very important. We're at the beginning of this and then the future is, getting, is going to get better. We're going to have more content here. Our product team is doing the maximum effort to produce more so that you guys can benefit from it. So the answer to this question, if in the future, if there is a need, if we see that there is momentum uh, to discuss uh, NetDevOps, by all means, our product team is going to make the necessary steps. So that's, uh, that would be the answer. But for today, we don't have anything on, on NetAcad per se. You can go ahead on the DevNet. There's a specific section that talks about NetDev, uh, the Net, NetDevOps, and that will provide you more information about it. So feel free to go and check it out. And as, we, as I mentioned, as we develop, as we continue with this fantastic collaboration with DevNet, then more and more stuff will be added to our palette of workshops and courses. And, and actually, just to you know, circle back on that, if it's really best to start with the workshops that we've created to make sure, you know, with uh, with Netacad, to make sure that you have all the skills under your be under your belt to be ready for Net DevOps. So uh, the sequencing that we're working on collaboratively as a team is going to be the the best path for for most. Uh, students. Uh, maybe that was an instructor asking, but um, encourage you to check out those workshops that, that Medicaid is offering. Yeah. Great. 
Um, so another question is, now that the future is SBN, does it mean that the traditional network or rather the network admin role will slowly be phased out? Oh, I think this is a big question. I, I don't know if I can even answer that question. Actually, I am sure that this is not that's not going to be happening today, uh, for sure, right? This is this is a complete transition. What I can tell you is, I, know, I wish I had that crystal ball where I can tell you what's going to be happening in ten days. We can do projections, we can do analysis. What we can tell you is that. There is a massive disruption happening. You can feel it tangibly. If you talk to a taxi, um, depending on you know the taxi business in your country or in your city, you could see, and if you chat with a taxi driver on the road and ask them about Uber, in some cases they would go all crazy because Uber is eating a part of their market. So in that particular case, this is a massive disruption that we can, you can touch, you can feel, and it's all happening because of the, that massive amount of data that is available. How the network um, jobs are going to be transferred Forming. There's definitely going to be transformation. There's definitely going to be disruption. We're heading towards automation. We're heading towards intense uh, based networks. So there will be more and more data. So definitely there will be more focus on, on, this, on this piece, on the programmability, on the changes. But will the traditional roles disappear? Maybe. Are they going to be disappearing now? I don't think so. And probably the folks on the call with me would, would agree on this. But there's definitely a big disruption or at the bare minimum, a change of requirements in what is needed from the job. So more admins will probably be required to do more of this stuff here. And more of the network engineers, and this is critical, are going to be doing uh, some programming. Yes, guys, you're going to have to do some programmability if you want to be on, in top shape and get the best jobs ever. But, but so, anything, if I can uh, reemphasize that the if anything the network has become more important to the to the industry um, because it's no longer abstracted out. So networking careers are still going to be extremely valuable, and that skill will be sought after. And it's going to take some time. Uh, I think one of the most important things early on is to be able to speak the language and just be able to collaborate with people across the, the different areas of the organization. So just being able to understand the context of what uh, the, the software application guys are trying to do or you know, the, um, the infrastructure developers are trying to do and being able to work with them uh, to move that along. But networking is absolutely still going to be a, a, an important skill. So Joseph actually answered this right when I was, we were looking at the same question. Um, he answered this right when I was saying it out loud. I feel spoiled having him on the call. He's great at answering questions. I need you in all my webinars. But his answer, you, um, just add on, <laughs> his answer, um, just to call it out loud, was absolutely not. On the other hand, if you think how IoT is driving the networks to grow, we will need programmability skills to handle the scale. Yeah. Yeah. So don't expect that job to disappear in 24 hours. Definitely the job will be modulated, transformed, and changed, and disrupted like everything else. But to come and say that a standard admit will be out of job tomorrow, nah, it's going to be very hard to think of it this way. <laughs> um, I also okay. saw a bunch of questions very really quick about uh, programming devices, networking devices. So once you guys finish with this session and go and check the blog, just check the list of those webinars. I'm telling you now, there is one specific webinar that is coming in the near future that has an answer to this question. So how will you be able to program networking devices using APIs? Check out the list. I ain't going to be answering which one it is, but by looking at the list of the topics, then, then you'll have the answer. So there is definitely something coming your way with regards to doing, uh, to doing this. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I just shared the link to um, the blog that he is referring to in the chat window again. Um, we are at the top of the, well, at the end of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and close up. Um, once I am done, uh, I am going to go ahead and reshare all the links that were in today's presentation back in the chat window again. Please remember again that we will be uh, posting a PDF version of today's slide on the DevNet blog, so you will be able to access those links if you don't have time to wait for those to be inserted again. Um, and again, just a quick reminder, this was the first session of this series. Um, session number two, the role of a network engineer in the programmable age, will be held on October 31st. Um, I see a lot of familiar names on today's call, so if you attend a lot of my webinars, you know that they all start at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
please, please, please take note that there is a difference in just this one session, and it will start an hour later. So everybody, that is what time it is right now, actually, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is when that session will start on the 31st. I just wanted to point that out so no one um, missed it by accident. Um, if you haven't registered, we really hope that you will consider registering and joining us on the 31st and then again on November 13th. And we will work on getting y'all dates for the remaining uh, sessions of that that you're going to see listed out on that DevNet blog. Um, again, thank you everybody so much for joining us today. Um, we truly appreciate you taking an hour out of your, your busy schedule to come and join us for the first session. We hope you enjoyed today's session and um, we hope to see you in future sessions. So Wadi and Kirsten, thank you so much for a great presentation. Um, Joseph, again, thank you for spoiling me and answering so many questions in the Q&A panel today. And um, great to see you on the call as well, Giuseppe. So thank you, everybody. And um, thank you. have a good uh, rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, and we will talk to you soon, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>